Good afternoon, everybody. This is Marty from Dog's Blog. In the noontime report of the morning session of the Frank Carson Adult Trial on November 6, 2018. Schedule started at 0900. The judge was on the bench around 925. She was about 20 minutes late again, which is typical of what happens when the, the jury wasn't scheduled to come in until about 10 o'clock. Um, they're starting up to talk about the uh, Percy Martinez was requesting the 1101 information, which was the prior bad acts type of information that Tanya Johnson was going to provide in her testimony. Tanya Johnson was a resident of one of the rental houses and lived there with uh, Darlene Barton, her adult adoptive mom, and had lived there for some time. Was living there, I don't know, I'm not sure which house it was, but it was living there sometime during that time when this supposedly occurred on the property. Marley Safari says that <coughs> the issue was in on eight fifteen of two thousand fifteen. Tanya Johnson had talked about sometime during that period, two thousand fourteen or two thousand fifteen, Frank Carson was yelling at her and telling her to get out of her house. Um, the interview may have been in 2014 or 2015. I'm not really sure. It wasn't really clear. Um, Frank Carson, she said, told her um, his mother has been having trouble with the residences and told her to get out. Uh, a week later, she said to Frank Carson, again, came over. And that was around 7 August of, uh, I'm July of 2015. Uh, Frank Carson was at her front door and let her know that he carries a gun and said he can take care of business. Uh, but Frank Carson apparently was not armed at the time, but patted his waist area like he was. In August of 2015, I believe it was August 14th or 15th, uh, she made, did an interview with a TV station that said someone came by her front door and said watch out for Frank Carson but wouldn't say her name. Uh, Ramona Casado did come during the interview that was being done by with Tanya Johnson with officers admitted it was her who told it. Uh, she had told her not to talk to the media. Uh, she says it goes to Frank Carson, Marlissa Ferreira says it goes to Frank Carson's intent and state of mind in the reference that he carries a gun a lot, uh, shows intent of statements uh, of prior and prior accusations um, uh, and threats made. Judge Inigo asked her why is that the 1101 the prior bad act? Marlissa Ferreira said it occurred during the interviews and searches and arrest um, and also she says Tanya Johnson uh, was evicted for talk talking to the media it shows uh, 1101 motive on prior occasions uh, this occurred during the same time frame and they're occurring on the property it shows an on a continuation of ongoing events she says it goes to obstruction of justice format. Um, Judge Zuniga wrinkled up her nose and says, not sure what she means by format, that format term. Uh, Marlissa Ferreira also told Mike Cooley, I'm no joke and no one to mess with, shows current state of mind and consciousness of guilt. She says it's a, it's a concurrent, ongoing state of mind of all the events that occurred during that time. And ask, asking people to not, to not talk. Marlissa Ferris said, from 2012 to 2015, there was on con ongoing conduct of, of the homicide, and it's an obstruction of justice. It gives a state of mind, and a pattern of behavior. Frank Carson saying he was going to do, going to hurt anyone on the property that does not belong there. Apparently, Tanya Johnson had 
uh, her brother or somebody uh, sleeping on the porch of the property. Uh, Frank Carson made it known that he was not allowed to be there as uh, Tanya Johnson and her mother were recovering addicts and they didn't want any of the drug activity around the house. Judge Janiga noted that many of her arguments uh, were, have been made orally, but the pleadings in the briefs filed um, only go to the homicide and nothing else and not to all this other information. Marlissa Ferreira says it goes about still talking about the overall plan of protecting the property. So Judge Janiga is trying to sum up and saying they tried to keep people off the property to cover up the homicide. Just, you know, basically, she's asking her a question there. Um, another long-winded rant was went on about Marlissa Ferrer about the property and the prior to the uh, homicide. Um, and she said that Frank Carson is fishing for anything big or little fish. Doesn't matter uh, who it is that he catches on the property, so he can send a message. Why didn't she bring it up in the brief? Is what the judge said. And Marlissa Ferreira said she thought it was included. Obviously not aware of what was in that brief. So the judge, again, this happened, um, happens on several occasions. Marlissa Ferreira does not re write her own briefs, nor does she proofread her own briefs. This is an ongoing problem that she is arguing uh, on briefs that are submitted that she doesn't know what's in the brief. And... Like last Friday, she was allowed a recess to go rewrite the brief and come back in 45 minutes on the pitches motion. This is an ongoing pattern of behavior with Marlissa Ferreira. <clears throat> Percy Martinez argued in regards to Tanya Johnson's interview by on the television, um, which is still on Channel Fox 40 um, website. If you go to their search and do a search for Tanya Johnson, uh, asked if... Uh, he was, she was asked if Frank Carson carries a gun around, and she said no. She's never seen him with a gun. She self-admits she's an addict, as both people are, but told no other addicts were allowed here. Her brother was uh, passed out on the porch, and Frank Carson told him not to allow brothers to be sleeping on the porch as he was a, functioning, a non-functioning addict at this point. In 2017, um, Percy Martinez argued that Tanya Johnson then had um, done some physical harm to uh, her mother and elder abuse was obvious and at that point they were told that, that she had to get out and was evicted. Uh, all other arguments are in regards to Marlissa Ferreira. He said, first, he said that Frank Carsey was in custody from August of 2015 to December of 2016. So there's no activity with Frank Carson as he is in custody and not capable of doing such. And Frank Carson, that there is no proof that Frank Carson was actually carrying a gun. Mike Cooley never mentioned being told he would disappear. Original reports that he made with law enforcement and comments that he made to David Shaw and Kurt Bunch until they were later on, much later on, and then those statements were made. And those statements originally were adopted by people like Eula Keys and Leonard Hall. He also see information is untimely as they had done the 11.01 evidence, 11 evidence prior to the trial, and all of this should have been brought up then. It's just another character smear and untimely request to exclude the late information. He also noted that we are spending a lot of time on this time of stuff with no jury in the courtroom. Tanya Johnson never offered as evidence prior to this, but now they're doing evidentiary hearings on this and not having jury in the courtroom. Melissa Ferreras said the info was discussed in 2015, but also tried to get in the prelim, but for some reason it never was. She believes she brought it up, but apparently it got discarded somehow. And she says, uh, again, that Frank Carson admittedly carried a gun, shows state of mind. Um, 
It's material and relevant as to the gun issue. Judge Zuniga um, started going through the 1101 motions that were done prior. I believe they're in like November or December sometime of last year. And she didn't see any previous claims in regards to Tanya Johnson. Does not see any information on this incident in the 1101s. Did not recall anything in the prelim either. She went down, she, Judge Aniga was going down a list of the 1101 evidence and uh, her rulings. Judge Aniga needed to see what Mar Marlissa Ferrer was trying to put in. And this, she said, this enormous case is a problem for the DA, but this information should have been part of the 1101 and approved prior to the witness being called. She says she's not go. She says it does not go to obstruction. Um, be prior, to, prior to, and after the homicide. Um, the evidence it can be re relevant, but is untimely and finds in, fair, in favor of the defense on this. Uh, this is the second time that Marlissa Ferrer has, this is a Judge Zuniga talking, by the way, second time she has forgotten some 1101 evidence and is trying to bring it in late. And, and she's going to preclude it as untimely. At this time, uh, the DA says uh, they moved on to a different subject, says she has disclosed all costs in regards to Leonard Hall. Uh, the flights and the housing and other reimbursements. Uh, they did pay for his flight out here, and the Leonard Hall did not. And there were 13 disclosures of witnesses paid uh, for uh, their testimony as the, uh, prosecution witnesses. Then that range, quite a range from the experts, uh, Jim Cook and uh, some of the DNA people and such, all the way down to Monarchy and Cooley, and some of these people had different expenses. Um, Judge Zuniga also noted in the Pitches motion, there is a large files that have to be gone through, and there's actually three of them, and it's gonna take her probably a couple of days to go through all that information, and she did partially on Friday. She also said the AG, Attorney General feels that the DA has uh, prov been prov providing a large amount of information as if they have this some of this information already. Uh, he thinks there's possibly provided through uh, now Lieutenant Dombey of the uh, CHP and probably maybe among others. She says there are clearly exculpatory statements in the internal affairs investigation information and it will take her some time to go through them. So um, what she's saying is the Attorney General's office felt that Marlissa Ferreira has a large amount of information in regards to this already and is why she's pushing so hard to get this information because she's saying she doesn't know what's in there but she's been providing a lot of information in their conversations and such with the other attorneys. So they feel that she does have a lot of knowledge of, on some of this stuff. So it's now 1044. The jury has been called up. Yes, 1044, and the jury has been called up. And Leonard Hall is called back to stand. He's now out of custody and they had to put him up in a hotel for a few days. Percy Martinez was doing cross. And he was asked uh, after done with his testimony Um, he went to the next court, the other court that he went to, and he received probation, uh, or his probation was dropped, and he was released from custody. He said, yeah, that's true. Marcellissa Ferreira did the release. Now, the other day, Marlissa said she had nothing to do with his case. Now she's handling the release. He now knows that he didn't pay for any of his own air travel. He didn't use his credit card to fly here, which he testified to the other day. And he did take the housing from Stanislaus County and a little bit of meal money, he said, but he refused to take any other. He used his credit card to pay for his meals. Marlissa Ferrer went on to re-re-re-re-re-re-direct again. 
and she asked him, did you use his credit card for anything? And he says, well, he believed he paid for the flight as they took his credit card for probably for identification purpose or something, information uh, when he got on the plane. And they did pay for his housing, but he bought his own cigarettes and he bought his own food with his credit card. Uh, and then Thursday night, he learned from his wife that they did not pay for the flight he, where she thought he had. He said he pled to the, the 487, which is a grand theft, and what he was being held on in custody for was a probation violation of that grand theft. And the remainder of that probation was terminated. Uh, there's no need to drug, for drug court now, which why he was he had a violation because he never went to drug court. He says he's been clean since 2009 now, and he has no need for drug court at this time. The DA paying for expenses has no effect on his testimony, of course. Percy Martinez, I asked him, he was not supposed to leave the state until, and with, until his probation was up, but, but he did. And then the DA has excused all warrants and dropped probation and draw, dropped all actions against him now. When he went to the airport, they gave he gave his ID and tickets. Uh, he was asked if he had signed for anything when he gave the credit card, and he said no. Uh, his wife didn't sign for anything either. Uh, he said the DA did say they would pay for the ticket when they initially contacted him. So at that time, he was taken off the stand, and um, Leonard Hall was done. At this time, the, G D the judge gave... Um, the jury a little bit of instruction in regards to the threats that Leonard Hall testified to that they can only be considered if Frank Harshley actually committed the charged acts of the homicide and his state of mind of the homicide in this case to determine intent and so on. They cannot be used for any other reason only if they believe that Frank Carson had actually committed this homicide. Jury was out at 10.59. We had 15 minutes of jury time uh, this morning, and they're not coming back until 2 o'clock this afternoon. So they went out and uh, came back to court after a break, and we talked about uh, the Charlie O'Dell situation. Marlissa Ferris is, uh, Charlie is to, O'Dell is to testify in 2011, Frank Carson and the Mike Cooley altercation. That's where Mike Cooley spit in Frank Carson's face. Charlie O'Dell apparently is saying he was there. Uh, Frank Carson made uh, threats to Mike Cooley, and there were threats of uh, killing him. Frank Carson um, was someone, he knew, knew Frank Carson. He had seen him prior at the courthouse. Um, they may have said the property too, but I, I'm not sure. I, didn't, I don't catch everything. Also, some contacts with law enforcement. He was there during those contacts with uh, law enforcement at the Lander House. Um, Odell had a car at the Cooley House and saw the dome light come on and found Frank Carson going through the car. He also noted on March of 2012, he, uh, Charlie Odell was smoking a cigarette on the backside of the Cooley property on by the barn and saw three people digging and, uh, and working around the base of the fence, I believe it's where the hole was, um, attaching barbed wire and such, and they were looked like they were putting up a booby trap, and he said that they were possibly Hindu. Charlie O'Dell says that he went through the lineup and then went, looked past Bobby Atwell, but looked back again and said that looks familiar to him in the lineup. Corey Brown interviewed Charlie O'Dell, said he picked up Linda Sue Burns, Mike Cooley, Keith Hobbs in Escalon when the car broke down and Mike Cooley had made the statement that they had just just got rid of a guy in Sonora. Uh, they were, Mike Cooley was muddy and dirty and the car was filthy dirty and had it broke down. They also started talking about Jack Abel talking to Charlie O'Dell 
In regard to another homicide, it was a Thomas Franks homicide, and Jack Abel had talked to him. It sounded like it was when it, when uh, um, Odell was in custody, and Odell said he could help with the Franks case. Um, it was mentioned th- uh, in the conversation that Abel said he worked for Frank Carson, and Charlie Odell didn't didn't want to talk about the Franks case. He wanted to talk about the Frank Carson case, Frank Carson, Corey Kaufman case. Um, and he talked about several instances of the occurrences and said Mike Cooley and Corey Kaufman had had, he also noted there was uh, several instances of issues with, with Carson, with Cooley, and said Mike Cooley and Corey and Kaufman had an argument in regards to stolen antiques at one time. Um, Judge Zuniga said Jack Abel's statements are precluded. Um, and then they went into court Charlie O'Dell's background a little bit. Marlissa Freer doesn't believe that Charlie O'Dell is a um, convicted sex offender, and he's a 290 registrant, which means he's a registered sex offender. Uh, his priors and his current case asking when his sex crime uh, Marlissa Ferrer is asking that his sex crimes be pl- precluded. It's highly prejudicial. It's been over 10 years ago when he was convicted, in addition that he just uh, recently worked out another deal where he was looking at a lot of time on a first-degree burglary and worked out um, a deal for agreement to testify. Um, so in 1990, look, Judge Dean Eagle looking at his rap sheet, in 99 he had a assault with a deadly weapon. Um, in 2000, he had the uh, child molestation. In 2012, he had a assault with a deadly weapon that was reduced down to a grand theft. And um, it doesn't, obviously it won't have his current uh, charges on there uh, this quickly yet. But Marlissa Ferrer also noted that during, after the prelim, uh, when he was released from custody, he was confronted by two people who said he was a, who asked him if he was a witness, and they beat him and ended up in the hospital. That was in November of 2017. Um, He he sought medical attention at time as he had some, uh, facial fractures and um, he was beaten pretty well, uh, severely. Uh, it was two to three people that had jumped him because they said he was a witness for the people against Frank Carson. They were Hispanic males. Um, and apparently there was a second time with a couple more. Uh, uh, actually, there was more than um, couple times it was it was like a dozen times he said he's been told he was been jumped because he was testifying in the Fred Carson case on 11 6 of 2017 there was two Hispanic males that approached him and asked him if he was wino which is a street name and are you the on the Carson shit and again they assaulted and um they beat him and assaulted him with, with boots and stuff, and he went to the hospital again with some face fractures and stuff. So that was it. We were done at uh, it was lunchtime, and uh, so um, the jury is coming back at two o'clock. Um, the confused judge uh, wants all attorneys back at uh, one fifteen this afternoon. Uh, Don't forget the podcast tonight, and don't forget to go out and vote, and we're going to try to get some uh, election results as soon as we can tonight.